So in this video, we're going to try and find the particular integral for this equation here. Now, a particular integral is basically a solution to a, a non-homogeneous linear differential equation. Now, this equation here we can see is of second order because of the y double prime. And we've got a constant multiple in front of the first derivative and three times the function y and we've got to try and get it to equal e to the 3x. Now if you check on the link below I've got some other uh, examples of particular integrals with quadratics and trigonometric functions. So just check the link below and you'll see some similar examples. Okay so back to this one. Now we're looking for a solution that's in the form of e to the 3x now here we could put a 1 in front of this if we wish. So therefore on this side we could expect that there may be a constant in front of this exponential sign. So we're looking for something in the format of y to the x will equal something like a, which can be our constant, and then e to the 3x. Now the reason we leave it in the form of 3x is because when we take the derivative of the exponential function, this 3x will stay. So no matter how many times we take the derivative, the input for this exponential will always be 3x. In front of this will change, we know that, but definitely this will stay the same. So we can be confident that this is the form that this will take. And also, y of x will be in the form, when we find our general solution, it will be in the form of the particular integral, so I'm going to use the subscript p, and also the complementary function, which I'm going to show at the end how we find that. Now the complementary function is a lot more simple than finding the particular integral, and then we put the two together to give us our general solution. OK, so where do we start? Well, we know we're looking for something in the form of e to the 3x. So let's start off using this term here. So y of x equals a e to the 3x. So let's take the first derivative, because we've got a derivative here multiplied by 4. So y prime of x. So if we take the derivative of this, the 3 will come down to give us 3a, and then the input will stay the same. So that's then going to give us 3a e to the 3x. OK, now here we've got the second derivative, so we now need to find the second derivative. So again, nothing groundbreaking here, we just take the derivative of this, and now we're going to multiply by 3 again, so it gives us 9a e to the 3x. Okay, now what we want to do is take this information from this one, this one and this one and then plug it into this. So y double prime, so we've now got 9a e to the 3x plus 4y prime, so now we've got plus 4 times 3a e to the 3x, so 4 times 3a e to the 3x, plus 3 times y, plus 3 times a e to the 3x, and then that's going to equal e to the 3x. Okay, so now what we're going to do here now is use these coefficients of e to the 3x hopefully get them to equal to 1 by finding a value for a, and then that should give us our solution. Right, so let's just multiply this one out. So we've now got 9a plus 12a e to the 3x plus 3a e to the 3x equals e to the 3x. Right, OK. What we could do here, we could just divide, sorry, let's put the e to the 3x in there, I missed that out. 
what we could do here now is just divide everything through by e to the 3x then that will give us something we can work with so we've now got 9a plus 12a plus 3a equals 1. Okay so that's going to give us 24a equals 1 so therefore a equals 1 over 24. Okay so therefore we can say that our particular integral should take the form of 1 over 24 e to the 3x. So a equals 1 over 24. Y p of x we're going to say is 1 over 24 e to the 3x. Okay, so that's the particular integral taken care of. So all we're going to do now is find our complementary uh, function. So for the complementary function, we just turn this into a non-homogeneous uh, linear differential equation. So we ignore this e to the 3x because we've already solved that. And then what we do is then, because that will then be zero, we then take that zero, add it to the 3x, and then that will give us our full general solution. So I'm going to rub this out and then we're going to continue with the non-homogeneous to give us our complementary function. OK, so now looking for the complementary function. So we've got, just write this up here so we can see that it's different. So we just set this to zero. OK. So all we do now is substitute the y for lambda and then the number of derivatives, so i.e. this is the second, this is the first, and this isn't a derivative, this is just the function itself. We do lambda to the power of that derivative. So y double prime, for example, will just become lambda squared. For y prime, that's just going to become 4 lambda. And 3y is just going to become lambda to the power of 0. So 3y equals 3 lambda to the 0, which is just 3. So now we're going to plug that into here and see where that takes us. So we've now got lambda squared plus 4 lambda plus 3 equals 0. OK, so we've got this now is just a quadratic uh, equation and we can factor that because we've got a 3 here and a 4 here. So we know we can factor that into lambda plus 3, lambda plus 1, set that to 0. OK, so we now know that lambda will equal minus 3, or lambda will equal minus 1. So let's put that over here. And then I'm going to change these into lambda subscript 1 and lambda subscript 2, because that's our two different versions. So now what we do is we have our complementary function, so y c of x this will be in the form of using e to the x this will now become uh, using constants we can use we've used capital a so now i like to use uh, b and c for this one so you can use whatever constant you like you could use x's y's whatever you wanted b e to the lambda x plus c e to the lambda x OK, now, very important that these two functions are lin linearly independent. Now, we have a situation here where lambda 1 does not equal lambda 2. So therefore, linear independence is sorted. That's all good. 
So now all I need to do is plug in my different lambdas. So I could have lambda 1 here and lambda 2 here. So y c of x will now become b e to the minus 3x plus c e to the minus minus 1. I just put minus x. So that's my complementary function. So now for my general solution, I'll just add the two solutions together. So now my y of x for my general solution. So I'm just going to put this together now as b e to the minus 3x plus c e to the minus x plus 1 over 24 e to the 3x. And that's going to be my general solution i.e. with the complementary function and our particular integral combined. Okay.